Welcome and thanks very much for joining us here on the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Deb Gillard, your host of the program, and today is Wednesday, May 2nd. We are very glad you're with us, whether you found us out on the Internet on our several different ways that you can get to us. As, as we knew, know today, you can always Google just about anything, but you can find us on YouTube, um, blip.tv, and of course we have a Facebook page. So make sure you like us on Facebook, and then you'll get notifications when our new programs are up, and you can click on them and watch them there. Of course, we are always on local cable TV in the Owatonna area, which is Charter Channel 8. And we welcome your information as well. A lot of information that we pass along at the end of the program about events that are going on in the community, um, guest ideas, show topics, things like that. If you want to take note of our cell phone numbers and email address on the screen throughout the course of the program, we're happy to get your information that way. We have a lot of good information coming up for you today. Of course, it's, there's a lot of events coming and going at this time of the year and, uh, and a lot of things happening. We'll be coming back from our first break talking with Marge Zimmerman about the Owatan Art Center Friends Luncheon that is coming up in support of our Art Center. A little bit later on in the program, uh, a couple members here from law enforcement and Steele County Public Health to be talking about Toward Zero Deaths, and we'll get into that just a little bit later. So let's take this first break, and we'll be right back. Please stay with us. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty with the Sterling House Assisted Living, a part of Brookdale Senior Living. Our mission is to enrich the lives of those we serve with compassion, respect, excellence, and integrity. We are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltvet of Horizon Eye Care Professionals. Eye care you can trust. We're proud supporters of Owatonna Today. Hi, I'm Glenn Mager. And I'm Tim Thomas of the Brick Mager Funeral Home. And we're proud to serve the Medford and Owatonna areas with cremation and traditional funeral services. And we're proud to be a part of the Owatonna Today Show. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us on this Wednesday, May 2nd, and we welcome to the program Marge Zimmerman. How are you? Oh, just fine. Are we enjoying our spring? We were talking about that a little <laughs> bit beforehand, and we said we got our hopes way up, and they've been dashed yes, a little it's, bit. It's been it? a sneaky, strange spring. I know, say. and it's yeah. kind of hard to put away the sweaters and yeah. tans and browns and things in favor of the spring colors, yeah. but in any case, we know it's we know it's here, and we're into May now, so that should be a, a There's good hopes, there yes. There is definitely hope. Well, we are very glad you're with us, Marge. Can you tell us first a little bit about yourself? Are you a, a native here of Owatonna and Steel County? No, I arrived here in 1954 to teach school. Well, you're just about native then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of your life spent here. Yes, yes. And so you taught school in the Owatonna area? In elementary school okay. for 32 years, and I had taught three years before that in Wyndham, so okay. 35 years, yes. <laughs> so do you miss it? No, not no, really. Enjoying retirement. Well, you know, be honest, that's okay, but enjoying your time in retirement, oh, too, Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I've been retired for 23 years now, so I've found lots of things to do in retirement. And that's, I, it always, it never ceases to amaze me when I hear mm -hmm. people who sit around bored in retirement, mm -hmm. I think, you know, you've got to look to somebody like yes. yourself who says, yes. these are the things that I wanted to do when mm -hmm. I was teaching, even though I loved it, mm -hmm. right? You probably did, but you, yes. there were some things that you wanted you're, to do. You're afraid you'll miss it, and then you find out, oh, there's life outside of there's work. Yeah. Of it. And so one of the things you're involved with is the is called the uh, Art Center Friends mm -hmm. for our Owatonna Art Center yes. here. And we of course have the Art Center on and many and mentioned many of the mm -hmm. things that are going on. We have a lovely little gem in this community that's our Art Center. Your group called the Art Center Friends uh, mm -hmm. made up of about how many do you think? Oh, I'd say about 10 of us. It's a changing okay. group. Some are away for the winter. And so it's a fluctuating number. The president is Nancy Dietz, but I won't try to name the others because I forget somebody. Forget somebody so. and then you'll be in <laughs> <Yes>. trouble. <laughs> yes. You forgot just one and then you're in trouble. Yes. But, mm -hmm. Okay, but a nice group of individuals. And mm -hmm. what, do you, what are the kinds of things we're going to be mentioning of course one of the events mm -hmm. coming up here very shortly um, but throughout the course of the year what types of things do you do you stay well with? we uh, plan and organize the garden show in the summer okay. and we always have a luncheon every year with a speaker and we provide refreshments at concerts the Sunday afternoon concerts okay. the, some of the evening concerts uh, some of the We're smaller ones. The, some of the, the smaller ones, ones yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if you see there so. with, if you see uh, folks there with uh, ginger ale and what did you say? Ginger ale and cookies. Ginger usually. ale and cookies. <laughs> yes. That's your art center friends providing that <laughs> yes. for you, and we're very glad that you mm -hmm. do. So thank you for everything that you do for the art center and and the others that are in your group. One of the things that we want to talk about is one of those that you just mentioned, and mm -hmm. that is the spring luncheon that's coming up. And that is going on on May 9th? May 9th, okay. Wednesday. Next mm -hmm. Wednesday, a okay. mm -hmm. week from today. And let's talk a little bit about that. It is, uh, is as it sounds, it's a luncheon, so it uh, starts at what time? 
the ticket says 12 o'clock sharp. Okay. <laughs> and, they mean it. And the program is to follow. And the name on the ticket is Fight for an American Dream. Okay. And, uh, and the main focus of the luncheon then is, of course, it's a lovely luncheon yes. in the Art Center, which it's, is a beautiful location, but there's always a, a speaker and mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. And let's talk about who that is this year. Well, I should also tell you oh. that where you can get tickets. Let's maybe, do that. Uh, okay. Tickets are available at the Art Center or at Kotke's, and they're twenty dollars. Okay. And I wouldn't hesitate. Get out and get your ticket if you plan on going to this. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not sure exactly how many. We were talking about the fact that there are round tables set mm -hmm. up, and, and yeah, so there is a limited tables. seating. Yes, they yes. can only mm -hmm. seat so many mm -hmm. in there for a luncheon. So you want to make sure you get and your ticket. And the lunch is catered by High V. They do a wonderful job. So it'll be good. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Our speaker is is it Peter Vodenka. Mm -hmm. Is that as easy mm -hmm. as it looks here? Okay, and and he's his topic is fight for an American dream, right? Mm -hmm. And he will be talking about what? This sounds fascinating. It is fascinating. He and his wife and four-year-old and two-year-old escaped from communist Czechoslovakia. Oh my goodness! And the story is spellbinding. I heard him speak at one of the forums at Trinity Church. Mm -hmm. He's the only speaker I've ever heard in my life when he said, oh, I guess my time is up. And a chorus of no's went up from the audience. Oh, my goodness, you're giving me goosebumps. <laughs> Are you kidding? I thought, I've never heard anyone beg a speaker to speak longer, oh, but they did. Goodness. And the social hall at Trinity was full. Okay. No arose like a roar. <laughs> and so was he able to keep going then? Did he yes, have a little bit of time? Yes, okay. Uh -huh. So oh, he kept talking to us, and he's written a book, and the book is Journey to Freedom, and the book is very good too, and he'll have his books for sale. Uh, one thing I liked about the book, it had lots of pictures. We got to see his parents and oh, his that. wedding picture and okay. <laughs> things okay. like that. How old a gentleman is he? You know? Oh, I wouldn't know. I didn't really figure that out. Uh, I did but he look had up. young children, let's see. And he had young got, children. I just got one note. It was the, they escaped in 1983. Okay. So young children at that time. So I don't know. I can't do the math right now on that. No. But. Uh, but, uh, but not not too old. No, uh, uh, no. And very much speaks from the heart, I'm sure. So his yes, children are, mm -hmm. are grown up now and probably yes. have vague memories of it. So without giving it away, and of course he'll be able to speak much more from his own personal experiences, but let's just give our viewers a little bit of a wet their appetite for what they're going to be hearing about. Well, the interesting thing about him that I didn't realize, and this is probably true of people all over the world, he kind of idolized America. Mm -hmm. He was interested in the cowboy life and American. His dad played American cowboy songs on his guitar. Oh, funny. And so, Isn't that uh, funny, the impact yes, that that makes? And we have yes, no idea. Yes, okay. uh -huh. So America mm -hmm. looked like the dreamland to oh, him. Of course it did. And he was a plumber. He had gone to plumbing school. When he graduated from plumbing school, he bought a horse, I suppose part of the American dream, and mm -hmm. a Harley. A <laughs> horse and a Harley, yes. and a good to go. Okay. And then he was married, I think, soon after that, but he had always dreamed of getting to America. Okay. So uh, they, he and his wife planned, and they had to be very careful with their planning because there were informers, he said. Mm -hmm. When he looked at the group of people at Trinity Social Hall, he said, in a group this size, Ten of you would be informers, oh, so okay. it wasn't something you announced or let anyone know, including no. relatives and parents. And really, just kept they it planned very it quiet. as a vacation into Yugoslavia. Okay. So of course they only took along what was vacation stuff, mm -hmm. and got into Yugoslavia, which was also a communist country, so that was okay. Okay. And said goodbye to relatives, but didn't tell what they were doing. Mm -hmm and drove, uh, toured a little in Yugoslavia and then drove to the Austrian border, okay. abandoned their car and ran in a rainstorm oh my goodness. <laughs> to get into Austria. And after he got to this country, his history was also interesting. Okay. He, uh, they were settled or invited to a little town called Beach, North Dakota, because the church there had two women who were from Czechoslovakia. Okay. So that was why they sponsored them. So he was there a while, and he actually did get to do some cowboy work. <laughs> oh, in North Dakota, good, <laughs> yes. good. Right. But then he moved, they moved several times, you mm -hmm. know, looking for work. And he ended up in, I think he's now in Lakeville, Minnesota, and has his really? own business. So, Is uh, he still a plumber? 
uh, I know it wasn't here? a no. plumbing business. Okay. I can't remember exactly. Some building or construction okay. thing. Something. So he's been a success story anyway oh with his uh, with his escape. You know, and that's the thing about stories like his coming from places that are so foreign to mm -hmm. most of us here. And I don't mm -hmm. mean that as a play on words. It is so foreign to think about being oppressed and in a country where you cannot freely leave and you no. have to keep it, things secret and like you said the informers yes. it's just it's the stuff that as far as we're concerned tv shows are made of yes. and, and books are written about but we can't relate so i think to hear someone tell that from their perspective and i'm sure he'll talk a, a bit about what life was like for well, him yes, why they even uh -huh. wanted to you know why mm -hmm. it was so important for him mm -hmm. to bring his family to america and i imagine it's just well and the penalty was very high if they were caught oh. uh, they would have been imprisoned and their children would have been taken away from them well i was going to say how much you're putting <laughs> the risk that you're taking when you have young children. It's mm -hmm. one thing to do it yeah. as a single yes. or even a couple, but now you have so. two very young children mm -hmm. and imagine carrying that stress yes. of that risk along with you as you make and that And the journey. children had to be told not to cry. Mm -hmm. Now that in itself with that age children would Oh, not I have wonder been if they had to be pretty serious little young <laughs> young people, but that sounds mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. And mm -hmm. it sounds like you were very affected when you heard him speak mm -hmm. the first time, and looking forward to oh, hearing him speak am again. Just waiting to hear him again. Well, we certainly <laughs> encourage people to come and support the mm -hmm. Arts Center. You will, I don't think, be disappointed. By I don't think anyone's ever disappointed at the spring lunch. And to tell you the truth, I think the speakers have always been very they well thought been. out, and yes, people seem to good. enjoy it very much. So. We've got the Arts Center information, of course. Give them a call, 451-0533. If you need more information, as always, I'm sure it's on their website, too, which is oacarts.org. You can go there. Um, of course, tickets again, mm -hmm. Arts Center and Kotke Jewelers, mm -hmm. $20. Mm -hmm. That's your lunch. And this wonderful speaker and the event is coming up on May 9th promptly at noon, right? Yes. Sharp. Don't you forget it. Well, Marge, thank you so much for joining us and again for your part in being uh, Friends of the Arts Center. It sounds like it'll be a great luncheon. Well, get your ticket. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you heard her. And be there sharp, by the way. Thank you very much, Marge. We'll take a break for our supporters and we'll be right back. I'm Diane Wilson of Profinian Financial, the bank that helps you achieve your financial dreams. Profinian Financial is proud to be a supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Hi, I'm Ellie, and welcome to the Oatana Public Library. Hey, I'm Hojo, and welcome to the Oatana Public Library. Hi, my name is Jessica, and welcome to the Oatana Public Library. Hi, I'm Isaiah, welcome to Oatana Public Library. I like that. Mayo Clinic Health System in Oatana, in partnership with Hy-Vee, Oatana Hospital, Oatana Park and Rec, Youth First, and local businesses, encourage you to join the 2012 On The Move Community Walking Program. The program will kick off on April 17th at 6 o'clock at Mineral Springs Park and runs through May 21st. Our goal is to walk around the globe with the final destination of London, England, the home of the 2012 Olympics. The program is simple. Simply call in your steps on Monday mornings at On The Move at mayo.edu. Track your steps throughout the weeks and we'll look forward to seeing you on May 21st at the celebration. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brenda Bednar with Summit Mortgage and I'm a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. I needed more than just another dead-end job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. With the kids off to college, I decided it was time for me to go back to work and express myself. Express got me in touch with some really great companies. Now, I'm on my way to a great career. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. Just yeah. Welcome back to a full house here at the Owatonna Today Show in our studio, and we welcome Jane Nyquist. How are Hello. you, Jane, from Steele County Public Health? And, of course, your, your role there is what? Uh, uh, health Mark. educator, coordinator of a couple of, of different grants, yeah. uh, Towards Zero Death, and a 
Four Corners Partnership, which is a tobacco prevention grant. A few different hats that Couple we have hats. out here. And one of those hats we're going to be talking yep. about today, the Towards Zero Deaths. And for that, we have a couple of other guests. Dee Von Wald, how are you, Dee, from Just the Oatana Police Department? Yep. And, of course, Dee, no stranger to the program either. You've been on here talking about some uh, driving safety and Towards Zero Deaths already. We welcome a newcomer to our show, and that is always well, Nick Donahue from our our Steel County Sheriff's yes. Department. How are you, sir? Good. How are you? Good. And because you're new to the program, let's just get to know you a little bit. How long have you been here in the area? I have I was born and raised in the Faribault area. Okay. Um, I've been in Marshall, Minnesota for the last seven years working for the Sheriff's Office out there. Okay. And uh, recently just came on with Steel County in October. Well, good for you and welcome to the community. Thank you very We're much. We're very glad to have you here. Southern Minnesota. Born and raised, though, at heart. So, well, it's right. we want to talk about the Toward Zero Deaths. So we're going to remind our viewers what this program is all about. Uh, TZD for short. I think TZD that's probably for sure. how you refer to it. But Jane, if you can help refresh us, what is it exactly again? Towards Zero Death is an initiative that the state of Minnesota has started to reduce uh, traffic deaths and serious injuries. Okay. And it's it collaborates four E's, which are enforcement, law enforcement, mm -hmm. education, which would be my part, Engineering, city and county engineers, and okay. EMS, which is medical, emergency medical and trauma services. Mm -hmm. And through our coalition and our collaboration, we want to reduce and um, reduce deaths and serious injuries. And um, we also are part of a regional approach, which is the 11 counties of southeastern Minnesota. Okay. And throughout the year, there are different waves or campaigns. Um, in our county, we uh, look at um, impaired driving and seatbelt use are the two areas that I received funding because uh, we had above the state average for um, mm, non-use or In one case, problems. being above the state average is not a not, good thing not good, in this case. No. Okay. But we also look at um, speed and aggressive driving and distracted driving, which is, is in the news. And last week, more Medford, more had so. a, Medford had a great uh, event for teen safety, traffic safety, and um, distracted driving okay. last week and so we just want to talk about um, some of the events throughout the year we do different events some target seat belts some target impaired driving some dry uh, uh, target distracted driving and so we want to talk about some things that are going on in May okay and so I'll turn it over to our law enforcement folks. okay all right and we're gonna let you kind of field these questions we've got we want to talk mainly I think about seat belt usage and how important that is and it's kind of amazing to me that I think as human beings we can still kind of forget or there are still people out there that either choose not to or forget to have their seatbelts on. Is that, I mean, it seems like now to most of us it's been around for long enough and our children have been raised that way to just get in and buckle up, but it still happens, doesn't it? Um, some of it I think uh, people are just so distracted at what they're doing that they just put the keys in the ignition and, and, just, and just take off and not even thinking about, okay, I haven't put my seatbelt on and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I think that has a lot to do with it. Yeah. You know, and I think oftentimes people are in such a hurry. You know, we live a very busy life mm -hmm. that, that we just sometimes simply forget something that is that's so important, really. It's so important and should be just automatic. But yes. it, again, it, it, it does happen. So what would you say are some of the major concerns for somebody who's not wearing a seatbelt? Well, usually, um, you know, involved in a crash, people who are not seatbelted are six times greater to be injured or killed okay. than someone who is um, seat belted in. And you know, the biggest concern really comes down to being ejected from the vehicle. Yeah. You know, in a crash, a lot of bad things can happen, and, and that is really the, the most serious concern you know, for someone not seat belted in a vehicle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but people don't take into account when you take speed times the weight of the person or object that's moving around in the vehicle mm -hmm. at the time of a crash, and you take a 100 pound person, say you don't have your child uh, buckled in or whatever, at 70 miles an hour, you have a crash, that person now becomes 7,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, can you survive being hit by 7,000 pounds, or can that person? that hits the ground at 7,000 pounds survive. Mm. And that's what we don't think of. We don't think of the big picture when right. we get behind You're the right. wheel. You're right. Is there, and you just mentioned children, and we've, we've kind of, it cuts across all ages, I'm certain, but is there a particular age group that is least likely to wear their seatbelt? Usually it's, it's those teens to okay. young adults, you know, into the you know, early to mid-20s. Okay. That particular age group seems to be um, most troubled when, when not wearing their seatbelts. And, and is that a distractibility issue? I mean, I just have to say that we have a teenage driver who, 
was raised absolutely to almost when he was younger say wait dad you know don't even leave the driveway i'm not buckled yet i mean that's how right. automatic is it but what happens to the race you know i think <laughs> i remember when i was younger you kind of have that false sense of invincibility oh, yes you that. know and, and you know those those younger adults they they don't think anything bad can happen mm -hmm. and and sometimes it you know they just forget or, or don't put their seat belts on yeah. and that is that's it's a huge concern for us yeah it is okay and so the other age group that doesn't uh, tend to wear their seat belts are seniors right. older seniors okay. sometimes they find them too cumbersome or they cut them wrong or and feel restricted or they can't get it buckled okay uh, just because they don't have the mobility or the abilities anymore or anything That's like that. Um, some of them just say that they just can't get over here and find their, their seatbelt buckle. What they don't know is you can get extensions from your uh, car dealerships to make them longer so that they can fit more properly oh, and stuff like nice. that. And so that's kind of information we need to get out there. And as we age, I hate to say this, we become more frail. And so seniors have to, have to be buckled. Yeah, that, that what you were just talking about, the, the weight of the person times, times, times compounded becomes even more serious if the bones are getting more brittle and the recovery time is going to be greater of right. even sprains and strains and things like that. Mm -hmm. We may have alluded to this already, but um, in, and maybe this is not the way this was meant as the question here, but where do most of the fatalities of un unbelted occupants occur? Are you, is that where we were talking about outside the vehicle? Um, or state is there state else? Sti statistics state that 83% you know, of motor vehicle fatalities occur in greater Minnesota. Oh, that's where we're talking about. In, oh, here we are in greater Minnesota. We're in greater okay. Minnesota, yeah. and you know, it's, that's a staggering stat. It is. To it think is. that 83% of motor vehicle fatalities, they don't happen in the metro area. They happen right in our backyard. And because of what, two-lane highways, I think, are always yep. a little more dangerous? I was just going to say, the, the most dangerous roads, you know, everybody thinks, well, the interstate, because everybody's driving so fast and whatever. Actually, it's two-lane mm. and county state-aid roads are our biggest fatality well, areas. Well, when you're thinking about it, you're head-on with people mm. coming. It, you know, conditions can affect it, I think, much more greatly. Dusk, dawn, rain, you know, all the adverse weather conditions right. that we can have. So when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Yep. What can people do? Say I'm in my car, I'm buckling up. What, what can I do to make sure that my passengers do? Don't move your car. Till everybody's buckled. Mm -hmm. Good rule. All right. That, Another thing I'd like to add to what they said is you have to wear the seatbelt properly, too. You can't tuck it behind you or, you know. Right. Just that shoulder strap the shoulder. has to, whoops, you have I'm to, going the wrong way here. Yeah, the you shoulder have to strap have the whole has to come on. over. And just so to stick that part underneath, it's yeah. not going to protect you like it's supposed to. And it should be, the, the bottom belt should be over your hips, low over your hips, because that's the strongest part of your body. And you want that over the strongest parts of your okay. body to hold you in place. And they should also keep in mind, too, the whiplash effect. The seat belt will help with the whiplash effect if they have their head seat back up behind, right behind their head. Okay. So there's a lot of things to think about for safety reasons. You bet there are. How about passengers in the back seat? Safer, more safe, less safe, doesn't make a difference? No, no one's safe in a motor vehicle in a crash that is not, not belted. Okay. You're just as likely to be injured or killed in the back seat not wearing your seat belt as you are in the front seat. Really? You know, you think about, um, like Dee was saying, something that, that can move at 70 miles an hour and that motor vehicle comes to a stop, they're still moving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, someone in the back seat you know, could be flying around inside that vehicle, could hurt or kill someone else who may be exactly. buckled in, 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 the, in the vehicle. So, again, I think it comes down to that driver laying down the rule and saying, I'm not moving this vehicle until everyone is buckled. Good, and that's good for teenagers to remember, too. What is the primary seatbelt law that we have in place? It, the primary seatbelt law allows law enforcement um, to stop a motor vehicle um, when anyone in the motor vehicle is not seat belted. Okay. It used to be an offense, secondary offense, which meant that a primary offense speed or something like that would have to be observed first before stopping that vehicle. So now if a law enforcement officer sees someone who's not seat belted, they can stop that vehicle and cite whoever is not seat belted. Okay, good, good, good information. And to keep that in mind too is that uh, the driver isn't always the one that gets the ticket. If the passenger is not wearing their seat belt and they're over the age of 14, 15 and older, they get the ticket. Oh, okay. The only time the driver gets a ticket for a uh, passenger that is not buckled in is if they're under the age of 14 and under. Okay, they need to start taking responsibility for that themselves Absolutely. too. Absolutely. If they have questions regarding seat belt usage, they can give you a call, I'm sure. Sure. Any and yep, all of definitely. you to find out 
what I can be doing. Maybe you alluded to those extensions. Where can I get them? How can I make it more comfortable so that right. I and everyone else in my car? Let's get towards zero deaths, at least by, Thank at you. the very least, by, by taking care of the seatbelts and making sure that we and everyone in our cars are wearing them. Thank you so much. Great information. Thank Nick, you. Dee, Jane, thank, thank you. you again, and we're working towards zero deaths. Yes, we are. We'll take a break for our supporters, and we'll be right back to wrap up. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Jake with Napa Auto Parts. Napa has the know-how for all your automotive needs. Napa is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. The Oatana Care Center is excited to announce our new partnership with Dr. Middle and Dr. Wilcox of Long-Term Care Professionals. This partnership ensures that residents can be seen right here at the Oatana Care Center when needed. With the special on-site care, long-term care professionals will be delivering to our facility. Our goal is to decrease hospital visits and ensure special one-on-one -on -one care for each resident. Long-term care professionals and the Oatana Care Center are dedicated to improving the clinical management for our residents, ensuring that they receive the highest quality of care. Do you know how to safely dispose of your expired or unused prescription and non-prescription medications? Not by flushing them down the toilet or putting them in the garbage. Doing so pollutes our rivers, streams, and drinking water supply. Take it to the box instead for safe, secure disposal. It's easy. Bring your unused medications in their original containers to the drop-off locations listed on the screen and drop them in the Take It to the Box drop box. Proper disposal of unwanted medications keeps them out of the hands of children and out of our environment. This is a message from the Safe and Drug-Free Coalition of Steele County. Welcome back and some quick wrap-up notes here for you. The 9th Annual Steele County Free Senior and Caregiver Expo is going on today. Depending on when you're seeing this, you may still have a chance to get there. It is from 11 to 5 o'clock and that is at the Four Seasons Free. Lots of great programs and uh, information and uh, vendors and booths and food and all sorts of great things going on for you, too. If, again, you are seeing this at the right time, in the upper conference room of the Four Seasons Center at 4.30 at the very tail end of the Senior Expo, they will be talking about the Senior Games, Minnesota Senior Games, how it's in Mankato for another year, coming here to Owatonna, and you can find out more about that. The Steele County Historical Society is hosting a Children's Hour on Thursdays beginning May 3rd. History uh, can be interesting and fun, of course. We hope They hope to stir up a liking for history and young people by providing them with interesting opportunities to learn about it. The month of May will be spent learning what history is, touring the new History Center, how fun, to show how we save and preserve history about the early Steel County in the time of the first residents. Uh, preschool hour uh, is at 10.30, and uh, if you'd like more information about that program, please call Doty or Laura at the History Center, 451 one four two zero and it promises to be a great thing for some of our young people steel county hazardous waste facility is opening for the season tomorrow thursday may third uh, may through september the facility is open every thursday from nine to three first and third saturdays of each month nine to noon and by appointment and that facility is located of course at the steel county landfill off highway 218 kind of right between owatonna and blooming prairie no charge for steel county residents to drop off hazardous waste and hazardous waste should be of course disposed of uh, by doing this and uh, rather than being placed in household trash. If you have questions, as always, call our Steel County Recycling Hotline 451-5443 or the landfill itself at 583-7766. Coming up on Friday's program, we'll be talking healthy seniors and in the upcoming Dancing with our Steel County Stars and also spring community events with tourism in Main Street. So please join us on Friday. We'll see you then.